Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm the Shakti Guru Nandini Devi and today we're talking about Krishna and Yoga Maya and Krishna Janamashmi. Krishna Janamashmi is when we honor the birth of Krishna. We're going to talk about Yoga Maya because she doesn't get talked about enough in her journey as like an infant and how powerful she was even as a little tiny baby. Okay, so we're going to talk about that and also just generally what happens when a god incarnates into a body on earth and what's that about. Okay, so please like, subscribe, share, and join in on this community. Help it to grow. It's really important for me as a West Indian tantric to show that, you know, West Indians that were through the di South Asian diaspora and throughout the diaspora all over the world, we are still connected to our practices and we still continue to receive psychic transmissions. And we are are here to talk about our culture and our religions and our spiritualities and deserve a space in this world to talk about that especially with the North American yoga industry that is predominantly faced by white people okay <laughs> let's get real let's get real no more erasure we're here we're gonna talk about our own practices um, and of course my opinions and my thoughts and my processing of these things not does not reflect all of the diaspora okay so that's why it's important for all of our voices to come forward and be heard we all have something to piece together regarding our lineages okay so first of all this is a channel mostly about shaktism of course i post tarot videos i do all kinds of things on here but the main focus and the foundations of my practice have to do with shaktism worship of shakti right so we can do this video without talking about shakti and we we can't do anything without talking about shakti okay because that's why it's so important to, when we talk about krishna janamashmi to mention yoga maya right and talk about her aspect of this and her story in this whole experience often goes unnoticed we celebrate krishna which is beautiful and amazing but we don't talk about yoga maya and how important her her story is in his story of his birth okay first of all when god's deities incarnate into the earth something has happened around the dis just like a, a imbalance in cosmic law essentially something goes on on earth that the gods are noticing and they're like this is not in alignment for the universe okay we're affecting whatever we're doing here is affecting the universe at whole and there's an imbalance and they're noticing and they're like we have to incarnate and come down and help okay so we can think about this in other lineages as bodhisattvas or even the orishas as well who assist people right throughout their life to elevate into a higher consciousness so they're seeing this they're not going to necessarily it's not about punishing but it's about changing and so we would see people like ravan right the demon king who prayed to shiva and then got boons right boons are like blessings to get so much power and then that power was used for his deep misogyny capitalism greed misogyny he was the embodiment of all those things so when you see durga or kali kali holding his head or durga you know um slaying maheshwara like there's something there to notice that is about that patriarchal energy and you can look at it in any sort of which way you can you don't have to attach a gender first of all to patriarchy and misogyny just because it talks about the dominance of you know people assigned male at birth cisgendered men does not mean that it's an attack on men this is a realization that when one gender in the spectrum of many genders becomes the dominant force or who makes the rules what we're doing is we're undermining the spiritual law like no person or no living being or no group of people should have dominance over others because that basically undermines the cosmic dominance which is organic and natural and cosmic law which are not f favoring anyone right because if we have like a dominant perspective that's based on race or gender etc that is overtaking and then it's not really clear or balanced or unbiased right it's it ends up being biased so when we get out of this cosmic order we're creating disruptions on earth it has a domino effect it affects everyone it affects all things and the gods come down and they try to assist us with changing this restoring it we hear stories about Kali, for instance, coming down and beheading a demon and we're like, it's not, nobody's coming for one person. You yourself are not bad or wrong. There's nothing you can do personally to completely tilt the world, right? You know, totally put everything off balance. 
but do we all subscribe and connect to these energies and help them to grow big yes we might do that including misogyny you don't have to be assigned male at birth and you do not have to identify as a cisgender man to participate in misogyny okay this is a real thing and that kind of leads us into why Yogamaya's story is so important. Yogamaya is one of the aspects of Shakti, and she is the, considered the eight-armed goddess, okay? And the story goes that Vishnu was going to incarnate as Krishna on earth to Devaka and uh, Vasudev, I think. I hope I'm saying, I hope I'm getting his name right. Basically, it's a couple and the woman, Devika, Devaki, she actually has a brother who's like a king or somebody royal or noble. And he is basically an asshole, okay? Pardon my cursing. Um, but like, he's an ass. Um, and he is, it's, it's almost in his destiny to be that way. And he is said to, there's a prophecy that says that he's going to kill this baby. Right? Nobody wants Krishna to die. Krishna is the embodiment of love. So if we think about this in that way, this person wants to harm love, wants to harm the cosmic embodiment of sustenance and love, preservation, right? Because Vishnu is preservation, keeping things alive and full and thriving. And what is Vishnu keeping alive, full and thriving? Prosperity, love, peace, all these different things, right? And also to name incarnations, Krishna incarnates as love, an aspect of Vishnu. And then Lakshmi, who is the goddess of prosperity, incarnates as Radha. So then we see that what keeps things alive, an aspect of sustenance and preservation is love, translated as Krishna. And then an aspect of prosperity is devotion, which is the embodiment of Radha, in, which is what Radha embodies, right? So then we see these mysteries behind the personification like we can look at you know, all these energies as people sure but they're not people they're energies they, they are filled with spiritual wisdom so the deeper we learn about all of these deities and stories the more we learn about the wisdom behind it and this wisdom gives us access to spiritual enlightenment and how to navigate our physical human experience to attain enlightenment and also just how to navigate the world in general because let's get real it's tricky out here okay and we don't always know what to do and those are some ways to do it is that you start to study these stories and inside of them are wisdom and we get to see how that's reflected into the earth a lot of these stories are also prophecies when we read them it sounds like they're talking about some time in the past but Yogamaya was basically born to protect Krishna. And this is why this also translates into what the world is going through now. Yogamaya was born to protect Krishna. Krishna was going to be born to these two parents, but then the father of Krishna on earth basically brought him to this other woman, Yashoda, and her husband, Nanda, and, gave, and switched out her baby. Like took Yogamaya, who nobody knew that's who that was, who had incarnated an aspect of Shakti, particularly at this time. Brahma was also incarnated at this time as the older brother, Balarama, of Krishna. All of this is happening in different spaces to different people, right? Because of this specific energy coming to earth, the energy of love, divine love, okay? And connection and restoring this balance. After all this chaos, hatred, greed, we're restoring love. And so the, the power of Krishna is anchoring into the earth. The power of Vishnu is anchoring into the earth. And all these other deities are being incarnated. All these other beings are being incarnated, reincarnated. And they're becoming the avatars here to assist this energy anchoring on earth. And to, to see out its purpose here on earth. So this really relates to us, right? Like we're all awakening. We're all fragments of different deities and energies. We're all embodiments of, of gods, goddesses, orishas, bodhisattvas. We all have these spirit guides. We are also elements of them. They're working through us to ensure a transformation here on earth right now. Not just at some faraway time where we're reading the story like it's some ancient myth. It's happening right now. When the noble person or king or whatever he was that was um, Devaki's brother comes to kill Krishna and doesn't find him, she, he goes off to find Krishna and ends up grabbing this baby, this 
little uh, young, um, you know, assigned female at birth, girl child that comes into this family's arms as a way to protect Krishna, which also that story is messy, right? They go and switch out this baby, they bring this other baby back, and they're gonna like sacrifice this baby essentially. I mean, they don't really want to, but what else are they gonna do? They're not gonna sacrifice, sacrifice their own child. Their own child is divine, right? Krishna. But when this person goes to kill this little baby girl, she manifests into her full potential as yoga maya eight arm goddess shakti herself comes out and is like hell no you're not gonna murder me you're not gonna kill me like and the thing with that is that she's also made it so when you pray to her she protects little kids like babies and why would that protection be needed and this is where we can tie it to now female or assigned female at birth infanticide Babies, trigger warning, and I mean, you know this, right? If you know about what's going on in India, you know that this happens all over the world as well. The patriarchy goes deep, okay? Casteism goes deep. And these hierarchies of gender, race, and power go really deep. So much so that it affects you the day you're born and you may just get killed. Like you may be murdered at birth just for being born assigned female at birth, okay? And Yogamaya is a story of remembering that that's not an alignment. It's not an alignment for this earth. So it's not just Krishna getting like reincarnated or incarnated into this earth to bring love. It's Yogamaya also coming into a physical human body to stop that practice. Has it stopped? Absolutely not. We need to remember Shakti. We need to remember these deities. We need to remember these goddesses and we need to remember our origin practices because there are prayers, there are devotions that we need to have to these deities to bring balance back to this earth. It can, we can look out into the world and say, how could we ever change this? How can we ever stop what's happening? And we don't, as one person, have to stop that. But we can begin to put our attention, our energy, our hearts, our souls towards purpose and we can look at how these things are affected and we can talk about them, we can philosophize about them, we can, we can take that into action as well. People are taking things into action and just even knowing about it will inspire that action, right? Like there are people going to India constantly to find themselves and spirituality and all this and that and have no idea that even though India is this hub of spirituality and religion and all this stuff, People go there for Hinduism, people go there for Tantra. And in the midst of all that, we're killing children, babies. Babies are being murdered just for being assigned FEMA at birth, okay? And that's not the only type of gender-based violence there is. There's so much harm against trans people, queer people, marginalized people everywhere are suffering. And often there are stories saying by our own deities right the transmissions of our own deities are saying don't do that don't do that that is not in alignment for cosmic law you are creating imbalances on the earth when you participate in these things when you participate in murder gender-based violence when you participate in greed in hierarchies of power you're not aligning with what is really already here for us in the abundance and truth that we exist in so it's important for us when we practice devotion to Krishna and we do puja for Krishna Janamashmi to remember yoga maya, to remember that there are serious things happening on earth that need our prayers and our attention. And this is not a matter of taking righteousness into your own hands and, and justice into your own hands. But when you have the opportunity to act in alignment with this, act in alignment with it. When you have an opportunity to show up in the world differently, and what, how can you do that? You may not be able to stop, stop the hand and the action of that murder, but you can look at the ways that you perpetuate, assist, and support misogyny, patriarchy, capitalism, greed in your daily life. How are you supporting that in your daily life? And this could start with if you are assigned female at birth or you identify as femme or a woman, how do you love yourself? Do you bring love to yourself? Because the love that we have for ourselves also combats the notion that we need to not be here.
A lot of us are carrying around this harm, this pain within us, saying that we shouldn't be here. Epigenetics tells us how we're affected by these histories, these histories that are still being played out today. If we live in a world that says that someone like me or you should be dead, how does that, how do we carry that in our hearts and in our souls? Okay? This is something, I know it sounds heavy to think about, but we're carrying it with us. It's time that we look at, at it. Shakti is about truth, right? Shakti is about bringing that truth to the surface. And as Shaktas, it is our purpose on this planet to stay in that truth within ourselves and as best as we can. It's not just about going, shaking our fists and talking about other people. It's other, ourselves as well. How are we living? And it takes time. Love yourself. Be compassionate with yourself. Your actions are not going to change today. We're programmed so deeply. But I'm sending this message out there because it's important that we don't forget Shakti when we're worshipping these avatars, these masculine avatars. It's really tied to a notion of dominance around masculinity, especially in mainstream Hinduism. And it's important practices like Shaktism get restored. I hope that you learned something here. And I'm sending out so much love to you all. And... I'm just so grateful to be able to sit here with you and talk about these things. There's so much more to share and learn about when it comes to these Hindu and Tantric tales. And I look forward to sharing more, that, more of that with you. If you want to join on my Patreon and support my channel, the links are all below. And I'm sending so much love again. Just so grateful.